Welcome to America Uncanceled. I'm Mercedes Schlapp. The FBI's raid of Mar-a-Lago last month shocked the nation. The Justice Department claims they were right to do this because they were classified documents at former president's home. There's just one problem. According to Trump's team, these alleged secret documents had already been declassified. Presidents have the ultimate authority on whether documents are secret and can swiftly make them declassified. Kash Patel was the chief of staff at the Pentagon and deputy assistant to President Trump, as well as the author of The Plot Against the King. He joins us today to give us an update on how Trump can declassify many of these documents. Cash, thanks for joining me. Hey, Mercedes, great to be with you. Thanks for having me. Well, let's first uh, walk through this process. I, I can tell you, uh, you know, at early August, it was right after the president uh, spoke at CPAC. It was one of his strongest speeches. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, Matt and I get the news that the FBI raided Mar-a-Lago, raided the president's home. This is such an unprecedented event to occur. And it just shows how uh, this abuse of power coming from the FBI. Uh, when you heard about the news, what were your initial thoughts? Well, I thought it was another example of the two-tier system of justice on full display and the hypocrisy and, unfortunately, the degradation of our law enforcement, where I used to be a national security prosecutor. The FBI and DOJ have corrupted it from Russiagate on down to Hunter Biden's laptop down to the Mar-a-Lago raid. And the questions that people should be asked for are pretty simple in terms of classification authority, as you raise, and also Presidential Records Act and personal records. And when we when we bring in precedent under the federal courts of, of cases like Bill Clinton and the tapes he had in sock drawer and things like that, these are all precedents that were never applied to Donald Trump for whatever right. reason because they were playing another game of I got you. So I got to ask you this. You know, I spent time at the White House. I've, I've worked for two presidents. And, you know, there is always a process that's put in place for declassification of documents and how this is being handled. The Department of Justice obviously didn't feel that President Trump did enough to resolve this issue of classification of documents. And then you have the FBI moving forward and leaking photos and colluding with the Washington Post following the raid. Uh, what's your sense in terms of how these documents can be declassified, and, and, and especially when it comes to what has happened to the president? Well, as the former deputy director of national intelligence under our friend Rick Grinnell, uh, there is a declassification process for everyone in government that is not the president of the United States. Then it is specifically stated in the DNI regulations that the president of the United States is the sole arbiter of classification, meaning he can classify and declassify anything he wants, like uh, uh, President ba uh, Barack Obama did the morning or the night he announced the bin Laden raid. Most of that information was classified. When he said it, it became declassified because before he went to the podium, he said, I'm declassifying this. That is the power of the presidency. And it should be applied uniformly to every single president. And so when you stage a photo opportunity, and as, as Johnny Ratcliffe said uh, recently in the media, just because they have classification markings on them doesn't mean those documents were not already declassified. That's so interesting. Does it go through the process where it's the staff secretary, you know, which I know plays an important role in the White House, would be engaged in that process, including the White House lawyers? And also does uh, GSA, General Services Administration, do they play a role as well? No, those are great questions. So yeah, so generally the White House Counsel's Office should have been, once the president said declassified, which he did on multiple occasions, they should have initiated a paper trail with the staff secretary and said, okay, that's the order from the commander in chief who has the unequivocal authority to do so. Um, roger that, follow, the, follow that order. And I don't know if that was done because I was not in the White House Counsel's Office or the staff secretary. And I know some of these orders came late in the administration, uh, but it was incumbent upon them to do so. And if they didn't, they failed to follow the lawful order of a commander in chief. But that does not vitiate a declassification from a president. So we know that uh, the Department of Justice, they're looking for a crime. They've subpoenaed over 30 uh, staffers as well. Uh, and those yeah. are basically associated with Donald Trump, including my pillow guy, which makes no <laughs> sense at all. Um, where does this end for the Department of Justice? I mean, are we foreseeing a, an indictment on President Trump? 
I don't think so. Look, as a former national security prosecutor and the Russiagate guy, I think where this goes is where Russiagate started. And it is going to expose the same corrupt activities by government gangsters at the FBI and DOJ. It's not surprising that the same folks are involved. And if it's not the same folks, it's the mentees of the Comeys and the Strzoks and the Page. Now you have the guys like Tybalt and Auten and Heidi. All of these guys touched the Hunter Biden laptop investigation. They also touched Russiagate. And now we come to find out that they were uh, breaking the law when it comes to the Mar-a-Lago raid investigation. And I think that's what you're going to see. Let's uh, dig into the Hunter Biden laptop. Um, Cash, I remember during the presidential debate in Tennessee uh, when, you know, many of us were surrogates for the, the president on the campaign. Uh, we brought up Hunter Biden several times and the laptop to various media outlets who rejected, uh, would not allow us to even bring up the name Hunter Biden, basically saying that, quote unquote, there was no evidence regarding uh, any connections between uh, some of these foreign governments and Hunter Biden and the Biden crime family. Now we learn that you saw Facebook basically telling Mark Zuckerberg, you know, Mark Zuckerberg uh, being associated with the FBI, where the FBI is telling Mark Zuckerberg, hey, this is misinformation. Don't talk about Hunter Biden. Big tech censoring the New York Post on these stories. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at these poll numbers and vast majority of Americans said that it would have been an issue. Uh, it, would have some, it would have been something they would have taken into account if they would have known about this Hunter Biden laptop. Your reaction? It's disinformation at its finest, and it's, it's its next iteration of it, be it Hunter Biden's laptop, Russiagate, or what have you. I think what Americans are start becoming hip to is, wait a second, we were bamboozled not once, not twice, not 10 times, but 12 times, and it impacted a presidential election. And I think that's ticking off a lot of people in the middle. And that's what we should be focusing on, is getting the truth out to those folks whose votes they have said would have been different had they known it. And of course, I, as an intelligence guy, come in and say, 51 former intelligence officials, including a secretary of defense and two directors of national intelligence, and a CIA director came in and said, Hunter Biden's laptop was Russian disinformation based on what just because the mainstream media wanted them to and they got caught these midterm elections i think we will definitely win the house and i could see us, us uh, with a slim majority in the senate uh you know i could mm -hmm. see jim jordan and as chairman of the judiciary committee uh, moving forward with investigations uh bringing in merrick garland our attorney general and the fbi director christopher ray do you think that christopher ray uh, will resign knowing all the problems that we have seen with the FBI uh, as we're looking back between the failed Russia hoax that they pursued, uh, the Steele dossier, this Hunter Biden miscalculation where they tried to cover up uh, what was happening with the president's son. I mean, who's going to pay the price here? They won't resign. The likes of Chris Ray and Merrick Garland know only government arrogance, and they think they're serving the goodwill of the universe by staying in these positions. But what has to happen is, and I know Jim Jordan, one of my former bosses in, in Congress, is when you give the gavels to the Republican majority and you get a Senate, uh, a congressman with the ability to subpoena those documents like Devin Nunes and I did, then you release them to the American public. And that's the only thing that'll move the FBI and DOJ that I've learned. It's not their own arrogance will keep these documents hitting the cover of corruption. And once you publish them, like we did the Nunes memo and company, which I think Jim Jordan and company are going to do, then a resignation isn't even going to be the question. It's going to be whether or not they should be impeached for breaking the law and the violation, violating the oaths of their office. And I think you're going to see that in the FBI's own documents. But Congress has Let to me act. play for you a clip. It's uh, Joe Biden. He was uh, being interviewed by Scott Pelley on, at 60 Minutes, where he talks about the 2024 race. Take a listen. Pause. So this is a one cast where he's talking about his intention to run. Yeah. So that's what we'll ask about. Yeah. Okay, bring it back. Five, four, three, two. Cash, I had heard that uh, the Democrats were already moving forward with uh, President Biden to announce his run by the end of this year. This sounds like a very different ballgame. I wonder if Obama stepped in and said, no, no, Joe, you're too old. What do you think? Well, Obama was at the White House recently, but it's kind of, you know, it's it's funny, but it's not at the same time. This guy has been saying for two years he's going to run again. And then all of a sudden he goes on 60 Minutes, which is an extension of the left wing media and says now someone has got to him to say, well, I haven't made that decision yet. So who's leading the Democratic Party if it's not the guy at the White House that they put in the White House? And that question then begets the other one. Who else is coming in? Who is it going to be? Kamala? It can't be her. She's a disaster. 
maybe Hillary will come back in. Who knows? But at this point, I love our prospects against whoever they're going to put up because who is going to come in on their side and say, we rescued border security, we strengthened the relations um, overseas, we took on China, Russia, and Iran, and we defeated the opioid crisis that is killing so many of our children in this country? Not one of them. Well, I got to tell you, I mean, uh, hopefully it won't be Queen Kamala, but I do want to <laughs> talk about this great book that you wrote. I didn't even know you were doing children's books. I'm so excited about this. I can't even tell you because then I know what's the gift that my schlap kids are going to get. And I, I'm going to put on the screen Donald Trump. He tweeted this uh, just uh, just recently. The great American patriot Cash Patel, who is defeating the fake news media and taking on the corrupt government in the D.C. swamp, is launching a sequel to his best-selling children's book, The Plot Against the King, 2000 Mules. This new book uncovers election exclusively launching on True Social, and I and this is a must-read for every child in America. And I'm just so thrilled for you. So tell us about the book uh, and why you decided to write a children's book. I think it's great. No, thanks so much. And Mercedes, I know education is near and dear to you. And, you know, we can't rely on everybody else to fix it. So we thought, what are a couple of subjects that the left wing media will go nuts on if we try to teach our children the truth? The truth. Russiagate. So the plot against the king, book one, was uh, Russiagate for children, and it became a number one best-selling children's book in the country. And then what's the next thing? Election integrity. So we wrote The Plot Against the King, 2000 Mules, both available at plotagainsttheking.com. And what we decided to do was, I'm not saying be a Republican or a Democrat or a liberal or whatever. Let's teach our children the value of truth, the value of serving, uh, our faith, our mission, our duty to our country, if you if you are so fortunate to serve your country. I think it's been hijacked by these government gangsters. And I think that the fact that I'm already getting attacked by the New York Times um, and company on day one of my book release here for the plot against the king shows us that uh, our mission matters. And President Trump, I agree with him. Let's put this book in every library and every school in the U.S. And well, that's I got to tell you, the liberals want to put pornographic books in the library. So I'm so relieved OK, <laughs> we're going to get a good, good book in there and really make sure that our kids learn about election integrity. I think it's so incredibly important. Where can uh, parents buy these books? Yeah, so plotagainsttheking.com. It's very simple. We'll see advertisements on Truth Social, but plotagainsttheking.com um, for both books. I'm signing them and we're doing uh, a lot of uh, T-shirts and all these other things. We're also doing a castle launch party in Texas in a couple of weeks. We're going to make sure our kids have fun learning the truth. And instead of learning CRT and gender dynamics, we're going to teach them about Russiagate and election and serving this Man, country. And the, and the greatness of America. And let me tell you something. You're so right. The Democrats, they can get away with it. They don't want Republicans to serve and they want to put the fear of God in these Republicans. That's why they do one investigation after the other. It's just a complete outrage. But you, Cash Patel, you're so strong and we appreciate everything you've done, not only for President Trump, but for freedom and for America. So thank you so much for joining me and thank you all for tuning in to America Uncanceled.